to UFC Quick Picks for UFC 250. My name is Joe Osborne. I have my three best bets for this card for you. I will be followed by Scott Hastings, who has his best bets, and he will be followed by Ian McMillan, who has his best bets. But let's start like we always do in the main event. We have Felicia Spencer taking on Amanda Nunes. The title is on the line. My best bet for the main event is for it to go over two and a half rounds. And that is coming in at plus 125. So Felicia Spencer, not exactly a household name, is she? But let me tell you a little bit about her. Eight and one in her career. She's never been finished and she is tough as nails. The only loss in her career came against Chris Cyborg. When she was on the wrong end of 122 significant strikes, Cyborg still couldn't put her away. So now we take a look at Amanda Nunes. Yes, she should absolutely win this fight. She's a massive favorite on a 10-fight win streak. But she's a little bit all or nothing in terms of the length of her fight. So if she doesn't finish you in the first round, it could be a long fight. During her current 10-fight win streak, she's gone to decision three times. And she also has a five-round finish over Raquel Pennington. So for those reasons, I like this fight to go over two and a half rounds and I love the value there plus 125. So uh, let's move on now to the bantamweight division. Super prospect Sean O'Malley, massive favorite over Eddie Wineland. And I like this fight to go to decision. It's coming in at plus 205. So let's make no mistake about it guys. This is a big, big, big step up in competition for the super prospect O'Malley, he's taking on Wineland, who's a former WEC champion. You know, he's fought for the interim bantamweight title in the UFC before. And I'm, I'm not going to come out and make a case that Wineland's going to be competing for a UFC title at any point here. But I just don't think O'Malley's going to be able to run through him. And the reason being is Wineland is a very, very good defensive fighter. You take a look at his striking defense in his UFC and WEC career, it's at 70%. That's pretty good. Then you take at his, take a look at his takedown defense. Strictly in the UFC, it's at 93.3%. That's his second best in the history of the division. So this is a guy with a ton, ton of experience, including experience in the smaller cage due to his time in the WEC. Then you take a look at Sean O'Malley. Very well might be the next big thing here, but he has gone to a decision in two of his three UFC fights so far. And let's call it what it is. Those are fights versus some very entry-level fighters. So a big step up in competition. O'Malley probably wins, but I think it will be by decision plus 205. So a couple plus money bets right there. And if you're looking for something uh, with a little bit less risk, but still a little bit of value here, I love Neil Magny coming in at minus 145. He's taking on Anthony Rocco Martin. So Magny, he is a very, very underrated fighter. He is 14 and four in his last 18 fights inside the octagon. He looked incredible in his most recent fight and that was after a very long layoff. And we just got a ton of evidence to support him here. He's got a seven inch reach advantage. He's got a better striking differential in his career. Better grappling, plus he only tends to lose to the higher ranked fighters, you know, RDA, Ponzinibbio. So this is such a massive step up in competition for Martin here. So give me Neil Magny, minus 145. Those are my best three bets for UFC 250. Now we're going to throw her to Scotty. Scotty, what do you got for us, buddy? Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, I love that main event pick there. Over two and a half rounds at plus money seems like a, an absolute lock. So uh, I really like that one. But I'm going to stay away from the main event for now. I'm going to have a pick later on that one. But I'm going to look at the co-main event between Cody Garbrandt and Rafael Sunsau. And I'm going to go with the favorite here, Cody Garbrandt at minus 160. Um, I think the way to win for a Sunsau is to drag this fight to the floor. But Garbrandt has never been taken down in the UFC. And he's fought some pretty good wrestlers uh, throughout his tenure. Uh, additionally, Garbrandt uh, will have the faster hand speed. And I think this is a good opportunity for him to sort of um, get back to his elusiveness, something like what we saw when he fought Dominic Cruz. Like that was an incredible uh, showing by No Love. Um, so I think that we're going to see a similar situation where he's going to be able to stick his jab out there and move and avoid a Sun Tzu. And of course, the biggest knock on Garbrandt is that he gets in these wild brawls. His chin gets way up in the air. He's swinging from the hips. And then he gets clipped and knocked out. That's what happened in both of his TJ Dillashaw fights as well as the loss to Pedro Munoz most recently. Um, Asensio only has four wins by knockout out of his 27 career 
uh, pro wins. So he doesn't exactly have that one punch knockout power that'll turn Garbrandt's lights out. So I think there's a good opportunity for Garbrandt to, if he wants to get into the mix like that, he can swing those heavy hands without a risk of being put to sleep. So I like Garbrandt minus 160 to get back in the wing column. And my second pick, you may have heard of Sons of Anarchy. Well, I'm looking at Sons of Askren. Yes, that's right. My boy, Sugar Sean O'Malley. He's taken on Eddie Wineland, but he's a minus 500 favorite. Uh, I can't not pick Sugar Sean uh, on a card. He's my boy. Um, and I think he's going to really piece up Eddie Wineland, who's, uh, you know, he's violence personified. He's going to move forward. He's going to swing hands. I think Sugar Sean's long 72-inch reach is going to keep him at bay. He's going to be able to have some creativity as Wineland sort of overreaches and overextends trying to catch O'Malley, and O'Malley's just going to circle away, catch him with kicks and whatnot. So I think he's going to piece him up. But again, minus 500 is just too aggressive here. So I'm also going to take his younger brother, uh, another son of uh, Ben Askren, and that's Chase Hooper. And he's taking on Alex Caceres, a.k.a. Bruce Leroy. Um, you know, Bruce Leroy, very creative striker, but it seems that he gets thrown to the wolves with these submission specialists like Crone Gracie. Uh, I believe that was last year. Um, and Chase Hooper is right there. He is an elite level uh, jiu-jitsu player, and I just think that eventually he's going to take it to the ground and submit uh, Bruce Leroy. So I like Chase Hooper and Sugar Sean O'Malley, and that parlay is coming in at about minus 115. So the Sons of Askren parlay. Let's get it. And just a quick touch on the main event, Joe. I think you did nail it, like I said earlier, with the over two and a half rounds at plus money. That's awesome. Um, but I like Nunez by knockout. I think it's going to be a little later, similar to the Raquel Pennington fight, where Pennington's going to keep moving forward. She's going to look to grapple and stuff, but Nunez is just going to piece her up over and over. We know that Spencer's real tough. She went five or three rounds with uh, Cyborg, and um, she absorbed a lot of punishment, but she kept coming forward. I think it's going to be a similar uh, fight to that one, just Nunez might get the later stoppage in that one. Um, so that's all I got. Ian, what about you? Thank you, Joe and Scott. So once again, we're going to leave the best for last, which is, of course, my picks. Now, last week I took two huge underdogs and those two didn't work out. So I'm going to go back to uh, being a little bit more conservative with my picks. But both of them are still underdogs, slight underdogs, but they are underdogs. So my first one, I'm going to look at the Bantam White bout on the main card between Aljamain Sterling and Corey Sanhagen. Personally, this is the fight I'm probably looking forward to the most on this entire card. I'm going to back Corey Sanhagen at minus 110. Now, both fighters have extremely similar styles. They're both very long. Um, they're both kind of unorthodox. You don't really know where their strikes are coming from. But an advantage that I see that Sanhagen has um, is that he strings his techniques together a little bit better than Aljamain Sterling does. Uh, Sterling will jump in, throw maybe one or two strikes, and then jump back out. Corey Sanhagen kind of mixes these all in, and he'll go, he'll go three, four, five strike combinations. Um, and that's also true for on the ground. Look at his fight against Mario Bautista. Um, when he got the win, he, he strings his submissions together with ease. He started off... Um, with an inverted triangle, and he rolled into Kimura, and then he went back to a triangle, and then he finally finished Bautista with an armbar. So um, that's the first factor I'm putting in that fight. Why I like Sandhagen. Also, I think Sandhagen, uh, his pace is a little bit higher. Um, he lands 7.14 significant strikes per minute. Sterling only lands 4.85. So I think Sandhagen's pace um, is going to be a factor in this fight as well. So give me Corey Sandhagen, minus 110 over Aljamain Sterling for my first bet of the UFC 250 card. Now for my second bet, I'm also going to take an underdog. I'm going to take, uh, this is a prelim fight, I'm going to take Gerald Mearshart at even money against Ian Heinish. So Heinish is one of those fighters that's just, he's solid at everything. He's not great at anything. He's not terrible at anything. But if there was one weak spot Heinish does have, it's his grappling. And that is where Gerald Mearshart shines. I mean, Gerald Mearshart, he has 30 wins, 22 of those wins have come by submission, which is an insane submission um, victory percentage. Heinish, he's coming off two losses, and he's kind of struggled a little bit when guys decide to grapple with him, even in, in his win over Antonio Carlos Jr. Heinish was on his back for the first round, and then Carlos Jr. kind of fell apart. His cardio got bad in the, in the second two uh, rounds, and Heinish ended up winning. So... Um, I like Mearshart at this price, even money underdog. He won his last fight uh, by submission over draw and win. And if you remember, I picked Gerald Mearshart. I believe he was plus 115. Go ahead and roll the tape back. 
My second pick for this card, I also have an underdog. I'm take Gerald Mir Mearshart plus 115 over Drawn Win. I think that was actually our last in-studio version of this show uh, before the world went to hell. Um, so anyway, I digress. Uh, I'm going to take the grappler in this one. Give me Gerald Mearshart even money against Ian Heinisch. Uh, so there you go. There's all of our picks. Of course, if you want more odds and information on UFC 250, head over to oddshark.com and check out Scott's full article uh, his breakdown of the main card, and you can see odds for every fight uh, coming up this weekend. So good luck to your bets, and enjoy the fights.